First fight is underway. Perez in the blue gloves. We're going to have Lopez in the red gloves. Oh. Good exchange of right hands there from both these gentlemen to get this fight started. Lopez showing good diversity of strikes. Went jab high, cross low, and then hook high. He's able to sit down on his shots pretty hard, too. Perez there, good little low kick there landed. Nice one, too, there from Perez. Lopez is doing a, a lot of early investment by pressuring so much, which is good. Level change, little clinch action, looking for the ankle pick, trying to get this fight down to the floor here is Lopez. Got the hands together around the body here. Let's see if he maybe turns it into a trip. He had that right leg trapped, but he's lost it. Good balance shown so far from Perez. That level change once more. Lopez showing a little urgency, trying to get the fight to the floor. Great job by Perez, switching the position though. There's that same kind of outside leg hook. If Lopez can, you know, swing. Momentarily got him down. Yeah, Perez did a good job. Finish that takedown. Lopez fishing for the chin here, looking to try to get his hands together underneath, but. So yeah, that right arm, that choking arm is actually under the arm. He's got like double overhooks in this position. Got you. I mean, you can control him. You can like maybe roll him if you're like a funky wrestler, but for the most part, those double overhooks are no good from, from guard. You can see his right arm is free now. Yeah. I mean, he could try to get another chin, but I think he'd be better off just trying to use it as a frame and try to peel Perez's face away so he can create some space and get up. He's, he's looking for a Kimura. This is a little bit better. These can be really hard to finish, though, in, like, the full guard. Unless top man's just negligent on letting that hand free up. Getting a little bit of pressure on this arm now. And that's a nice transition to an arm bar there from Lopez. He's got to get that left leg across the head to control the posture. Clears the there's, head, looking for the pressure here. There's 20 seconds. He's hitting that backdoor angle. He's got a good bite, but I don't know if we have enough time to finish this. He's got to really to control that wrist. Anthony Pettis, Anthony Pettis finished Pinson Henderson this way. Same style on bar. You got to trap the wrist and really bridge into it. There it is. Oh, oh saved by the looks bell. Like we just make it out of the first round here. <laughs> Good on bar submission attempt there right at the very end of the round for Drew Lopez. Yeah, that was cool action going from that, like, Kimura to the straight on bar to the classic closed guard on bar. I was going to say right there. You know, Perez, anytime you're in guard and someone's going for a Kimura, you can cup the inside of your thigh. We call it the padlock grip. And it's just such an easy defensive grip to get. It's such a hard grip to break. You can always connect your hands together. What you can't do is let them isolate your hand and get it away from your hips, and that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened there, yeah. Good action to get the afternoon started here at Fury Challenger Series 9. The Challenger Series cards are always proving to put out some great quality fights. All these up-and-comers looking to make a name for themselves, looking to get to the next level, get some recognition. We really see a lot of impressive finishes. We see some impressive wars out here. Looking forward to see what the rest of this card has in store as our first fight heads into the second round. Both fighters here got brought a really good crowd with them. I think Lope, Lopez's group's a little bit louder than Perez. But he brought the fans as well. Good for these boys. Oh, oh. Lopez. Oh, man. Oh, man. Both guys landed really well right there. Now Perez looking for the takedown once more right here in front of us. Yeah, Lopez has a potential guillotine. He's got his hands together, and now he's in full guard. This is going to be dangerous. Oh, it's he's switching, trying to go with classic grip. There's a rule of thumb with guillotines. If it's arm in and you let your hands go to reconnect, you usually won't reconnect those hands. There's a nice arm bar again. Yeah, going back to the well again once more Lopez. with this arm bar, yeah. Got a lot more time. Notice Lopez trying to lay on that left side. It's called the backdoor arm bar. 
Yeah, trying to rotate all the way through to get the necessary angle on the arm there. Perez has a figure four, albeit it's not particularly tight. He cleared his elbow line. He's got to watch out for the triangle. Another arm bar as well. It's going to be tough without controlling the body. Yep. Yeah, Perez had a nice little guard pass there. Props to Lopez. That was really good offense. And that's the risk you take when attacking. You do got to open your guard. Under two minutes left here in the second round. Ryan Perez looking to move over to the mount position here on Drew Lopez. And Lopez was able to kind of recover half guard. He's you know, got the head and arm trapped. If anything, just to mitigate some damage. Nice underhook entry there from Lopez. I know it's tough to ask for, but if Lopez can disconnect that bottom left leg of his, he could try to build his base. It's like abandoned guard and you know almost give a pass it's tricky but he's got the underhook his base is all but built he's got to post up to that left elbow and just got to force the get up you know it's easier said than done there's a lot of a lot of body weight and resistance but that's that's the way it's got to be got to be done perez trying to hang heavy here on the neck on the head lopez, lopez. back to his feet temporarily a good job kind of squaring up into a front head lock Little trip gets him down. Now Perez looking to get around to the back here. Guy has one hook in. Not quite under the chin here with this rear naked choke attempt. He doesn't have the best angle either. Lopez able to turn back into the guard now. It's a good fight. Too. Crowd getting extremely involved with this fight. Nice. Good scrambling there from Perez. He does not settle on bottom. Under 30 seconds left here in the second round. A lot of the action here has been back and forth in a very similar position on the ground, exchanging, grappling. Perez looking to try to get to the back. Lopez flattens out, decides. Same thing. If we had a little more time, that was a legit yeah, head and arm choke attempt. Round, headed into this third round now. Both rounds ended with some very close submission scenarios at the very end of the round. So. This could be a, uh, a close one headed into the third. Uh, it's a lot of grappling. I'll tell you, it's tough to, you know, go from the feet to the ground, to the feet to the ground. These guys are feeling it. Very technical fight. Man, I, for the time it has been spent on the feet, these guys have been trading. Yeah, I'd like to see if we stand a little bit longer on the feet to begin this third round. A lot of grappling in the first two rounds. Common position shared amongst both of these gentlemen, but this third round could prove to be huge for one of them. Yeah, I don't blame them for shooting. I mean, it's a firefight on both sides. Nice little feint to her right hand there from Lopez. Yeah, with so much grappling in the first two rounds, those fates could really prove to pay dividends here in the third, getting your opponent thinking about the takedown. You see the little right hand there was able to land. Good for body work there from Lopez, yeah. Used it to kind of crash in and you know, put him on the cage, take a shot. He's in on a single leg right now. Nice, the old knees to the quad. Those are more effective than they look. Oh, man. Those hurt. Very annoying little strikes. A couple days later, you're wondering why you can't walk. It's those <laughs> things. Yeah. Again, very common position and here in the third round. Both fighters going for takedown attempts of their own back and forth. Yeah, Perez, Perez is diligent with his reversals. And successful once more here with his own dump. For the time being, has Lopez down, looking to get around to the backside as Lopez grabs a hold of the head. Interesting 
maybe try to enter into a scarf fold, but the back exposure yeah, just both makes hooks. it so tricky. There's the body triangle has been secured now for Perez. Yeah, this is going to be hard to get out of. Yeah, his head's cleared now as well. If he can just get unjammed from the cage there as he does right now, looking for some neck isolation to get a rear naked choke finish here. It's a tight body triangle too. Yeah, not, very, not very many ways technically sound to escape that technique. You know, no. there's a bunch of things that you can do, but no real avenue that you know you can just take to no, get out of that. None are consistent. Like, they all have their, you know, their perks, but, like, even laying to the locked side, it doesn't get you out of it. You just kind of hope they, they re-switch their lock. And so many guys are good now at withstanding the pressure on their ankle. They don't even mind. They'll yeah. stay with the lock on the bottom side yeah. and, and keep you there. See now. Perez really trying to get underneath the chin here. 45 seconds left here in the fight. So far, Perez in control of this round. Lopez doing a good job. Isolating wrists, holding on, looking to try to turn inside now, but still very, very difficult with that body triangle yeah, locked on. Yeah, sure. It's just grabbing the head. That's a really cool way to put some tension on, you know, the neck and the feet. But that's just that body triangle is just such a good connection point. You see Lopez scrambling, but Perez did a great job kind of reloading that back take. Short time, 10 seconds left in the round. All right, that'll do it. It's a good fight from those guys. Great way to get the card started here. Great back and forth by both these gentlemen. Good solid scrap to kind of set the tone, set the pace for the afternoon. Getting the judges involved here early. See what they have to say about this one here in just a few moments. We were talking about pre-fight here before we got on the commentary, talking about how San Antonio always shows out, not only as a crowd, not only you know as a fan base, but the, the fighters, the, the quality of the fights, the quality of the fighters. There's never really been a, a boring fight I've really seen here. And obviously tonight is still early. Anything can happen when you have 15 fights on the card. But I think this is a good testament of what we can expect for the rest of the afternoon here in San Antonio. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I've maybe watched fights 20 times over the years at Cowboys. And, you know, Fury always puts on the best fights. But even throughout other promotions, you know, this, there's always been good fights in this arena. And uh, the fans have always been very, very involved in the show. Makes it a lot more fun. All right, it looks like Wayne has our decision. We're going to go ahead and toss it in ha to him now and make this one official. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of combat, we go to the judges' scorecards for your decision. Brought to you by Live Oak, Texas Vodka. The scores are 30-27, 30-27, and 29-28. Your winner. Fight you and a must decision, Ryan Perez! Ryan Perez pulling off the decision there unanimously, getting the job done. Able to do enough in the judges' eyes, had enough of the control, especially there in that third round, to really solidify the win there.